Hi, I'm Jacqueline Quinn, and I'm here to talk to you about what's next. We'll go over the probate process and why you need a will. So, I'm here to give you some general information about planning for the future. And as a legal disclaimer, of course, you know, I have to tell you this is general information, not to be construed as specific legal advice for you, but please feel free to contact us and we can always give you a consultation and talk about your own needs. My contact information is here and we'll make sure we provide that to you as well. So when we talk about what's next, let's first think about what we do when someone we love or know passes away. It's a very difficult time and we need to right away act and gather all of the necessary documents they had and figure out what to do next. Typically, you would contact a funeral home and they would help walk you through the process. So it would be good to know what the person wanted for their remains, whether they were to be cremated or buried. Those are decisions that need to be made rather quickly. Another thing that happens pretty quickly after someone passes away is the obituary is filed. So at that point, you would get together all of your thoughts about the person and put together that obituary. It serves as both public record and notice that there was a death. So we're going to talk about all of the documents involved with the planning. And when we think about estate planning, you might think that it's this huge endeavor and it's only for people with a lot of money or a lot of resources, and that's just not the case. If you're over 18, you need to have a will, and you definitely need to have a power of attorney and healthcare directive. All of these things help cover you in the event something happens, and it protects your family as well. So when we talk about these documents, first with the power of attorney and healthcare directive, those are effective during your lifetime and it allows someone to step in and assist you if you're incapacitated. When we talk about the will, that's the document that comes and steps in once you pass away and it dictates how all of your assets are divided to your loved ones. So the requirements of a will here in Delaware are it is signed by the testator or the person making the will, two witnesses, and it is notarized. Um, in the will, we need an executor. That's the person that you trust to divide all of your assets to make sure they go to the right people. The executor is also responsible for paying any expenses of the estate. You also name beneficiaries in your will, and the beneficiaries are those who receive the assets from you. Beneficiaries can be a spouse, children, friends, really anyone to whom you wish to make a gift. In the will, one of the very important things to do if you have children is to appoint a guardian for your minors. Now, the guardian could be someone who takes over and steps in as the parent for the children to manage their day-to-day. -day. They might live with the guardian, but also a guardian could be someone who assists with financial aspects for the children, such as managing life insurance, property the children might inherit, and serve as a trustee over funds for the children until they reach an age of majority or an age where you're comfortable with them receiving the funds. One of the common mistakes that I often see is someone comes and sits down and they go through a very detailed instruction in their will as to how they would want their assets divided. What they don't realize is when you have beneficiary designations on an account, that beneficiary designation is where the money would go and it doesn't flow through the will. So in doing the estate planning and thinking about your will, it's important to go through any accounts where you may have beneficiaries listed already and make sure that those are the people that you want listed there. And if not, now is the time to change it. Ideally, you have beneficiary designations where available. In this way, the funds don't pass through the will and they go directly to the person you indicated. This position of last remains is where you would indicate how you want your remains to be placed for forever. 
Um, so disposition could be burial, it could be cremation, it could be um, planted in a memorial garden. So there are a lot of options. It is something to think through because that the disposition is something that could really burden family members if they don't know what you would want and they try so hard to do the right thing and sometimes that uh, opinion is different between family members. So if you do have strong feelings, it's important to write that down. So this way your executor and your family would know exactly what you wanted. The last document that sometimes is really important is a revocable trust. So the revocable trust is set up in order to maintain some control over funds for a long period of time once you pass away. And this could be useful if you have minor children and you want the funds to be used in a certain way for them throughout their life, or if you have disabled family members that you're caring for and you want to make sure that the funds can last a certain amount of time. When someone creates a trust, the person creating the trust and putting the funds into the trust is called the settler. Then we have the trustee, who is the person who manages the funds. And then lastly, the beneficiary is the person who the trust benefits and who would eventually receive any remaining funds that were in the trust. Every state has a statute of intestate succession, which dictates how your assets are divided if you don't have a will. So it is a myth that if you don't have a will, all of your money would go to the state. I want to put that out there. But it is important to have a will so that it doesn't follow the statute since that might not be what you want. One of the things that is surprising to a lot of people here in Delaware is if you're married and only one spouse owns the property, so say you have a house, husband has the house in his name, it's not in the wife's name, and then husband passes away, the wife doesn't inherit the entire house. What the wife would inherit is the house with a life estate subject to any children of the husband. Sometimes they could be stepchildren, sometimes it's children of the married couple. But in that situation, it does limit the wife's ability to sell the house if needed, to get a mortgage if needed, and it does cause a lot of heartache. So that's one area that I'd like to point out, that if you own property, it really is important to have a will so you could very clearly explain who you would want to inherit that property. So you hear us talking about the probate process. And the probate process is really how we gather all of the assets of someone who passed away, and we gather all of the bills that are left lingering for the estate, and we make sure that the bills that need to be paid are paid, and then any assets of the estate are divided as they should be. The probate process typically takes about a year. It could be longer. And if there's a situation where the process is challenged or we don't have cooperation between the parties, it could take years. And it could be very expensive. So in doing planning, it's really important that we limit the probate process as much as possible and take care of as much planning as needed. So this way, the process is as simple as can be for your family and friends, and we make sure that everyone who was supposed to get a gift from you does receive that gift. The probate process is overseen by the Court of Chancery and the Register of Wills Office in the county in which the property is located or where the person lived is the office that manages the probate process. The public offices involved when someone passes away include the Register of Wills Office, the Recorder of Deeds Office, if there were any property, if there were any properties owned, and the Office of Vital Statistics. The Office of Vital Statistics manages the death certificate and could possibly have a birth certificate or other documents if needed.